Hi, this is Kara Mayer Robinson, and you're watching a special video edition of Really Famous. My guest today is Kirsten Bangsness. She plays Garcia on a huge television show called Criminal Minds. So, Criminal Minds is now in its 14th season. It's about to be in its 14th season. We just finished episode 299, which is our 13th, end of our 13th season. So, so yeah. when does the 14th come out? Um, in the fall, in the fall. Oh, okay. We start shooting it in July. So let me just make sure I get this straight. So it's on Wii TV now, but this is everything through the end of... Yeah, so, so, so Criminal Minds is on CBS, you know, like if you watch the new episodes. Yeah. However, people miss episodes, people love a marathon of Criminal Minds, and Wii TV started, they started doing this thing on May 25th, which is uh, Childhood Abduction Awareness Day. They started to do a uh, thing where on Saturdays and Mondays they're doing special... Uh, Criminal Minds, they're doing programming, special programming, but which includes on Saturdays and Mondays, Criminal Minds marathons, and a lot of the episodes that they're going to air of Criminal Minds sort of focus on missing children and child abduction and stuff like that. And, you know, our show is harrowing and uh, mysterious and entertaining, and also you could learn some tips about stuff. So if you want to watch right now, some criminal minds in big doses, the perfect place to do it would be Wii TV. On okay, Saturdays, that's perfect. On so Saturdays and Mondays. You can watch it now, you can watch it later, you can watch all the new ones Absolutely. when they are ready for you, yep. and all the old ones yes. you can I encourage, out. I encourage people to meditate, to hug your family, to make some soup, to do other things besides just watch our television program because it's a little violent. It is a little violent. Yeah. Just, it's okay, but I'm just saying you should pepper your life with variety. Right, it, to offset it. Yeah, 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 of yeah. Of course. So do you get recognized? My guess is you do. You have like an amazing, cool look about you. Thank you. Your clothes, your glasses, your makeup. Well, you know, I'm, I, for this kind of press stuff, I break out, I, I buy Garcia all of her glasses. So Garcia has about 46 pairs of glasses. Kirsten has three pairs of glasses, and I'm including my pair of sunglasses. So um, I break these out for like, we're doing publicity. You want people want Garcia. They, you know, Kirsten dresses her own kind of eccentric, but Garcia is Garcia. So, uh, do I get recognized a lot? Sometimes, and sometimes not at all. But sometimes, yes. It's it's really uh, strange. This is like reverse Clark Kent. If I walk around like this, no one. But this, interestingly enough, I was somewhere wasn't wearing my glasses. Uh, I was at I was at DragCon, which is the RuPaul's Drag Race convention thing. So with my friend, we find these kitty cat ears. They're furry. They're adorable. And Garcia wears. And I was like, I'm gonna buy some for Garcia. So I buy a bunch. The girl goes, Do you want to wear them right now? And we're walking through the convention, and you know, no one's paying any attention to me. I'm wearing my contacts. So yeah, I do. She puts them on. I turn around, mocked by people. So apparently, glasses and or kitty cat ears, you get recognized as Garcia. Okay, yeah. okay great. So you actually shop for her it's you know what it is is when we first started the doing the show like the very first time I was supposed to be just on just the first episode and they had said um, bring your own clothes could you bring your clothes to that because I was just supposed to be there for that one day and and I'm not the traditional size zero and I'm not uh, when someone says oh she's full figure I'm a size 12 but I'm a size 12 who exercises every day so I'm a I, I'm I'm in my own, I'm my size, just like you're your size, everybody is their size. So they, they didn't, when I sent my sizes, they were, they, everything was too big on me or it didn't zip up. So they were like, could she just bring her own clothes? So I brought my clothes and you know, I dress like a pirate from space. So I brought my things and I laid them out, you know, and this is my glitter, glitter purple skirt and this is a jacket that I cut the sleeves off of and this is a, this used to be a dress but I, I turned it into a tank top and the girl looks at all of it and she's like this is the FBI no one dr oh god and they put me in this green sweater and they thought they're being so crazy and and so I go and I wear the green sweater it's so crazy and then the next time I come in I'm wearing a they put me in a suit and when I go to leave I'm wearing my clothes and the producers say that that up. Why didn't she wear that costume? And the costumers, the, the, those are her clothes. And they said, can you bring those clothes? And we want to put you in those clothes. So now Garcia started dressing like Kirsten. Kirsten had to change the way Kirsten dresses because she likes to dress her own way, just like Garcia. So we dress totally different. But I put it, I, her props are all me. And then the prop department kind of starts participating. The glasses were all me. And then the costume department starts participating. And I did start the kitty cat ear situation because that's just very her and so when I brought them in the hair department was like yes yes please more of that so I make suggestions and then they agree with me usually because I made her up so you know like 
she was she just was supposed to be just like two lines of information so so it turned into yeah. something much more than two lines yeah. very cool very yeah. three-dimensional yeah it, it makes it makes it more it, and it makes it funner and the, the it's very her whole desk is like a fan participatory experiment people will give me pens that they've made I have pens from all over the world they're on that desk I have pens that uh, when I've done a play and someone's come and seen the play they'll hand me a a little, you know, a thing of lotion or a thing of lip gloss. It all goes on the desk. So if you look on the desk, it's just covered with stuff, but it's stuff that fans have given. It's like this big, you know, weird art project. So you do have your fans who actually want to give you yeah, something yeah, back yeah, 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 for yeah. what you give them every yeah, week. Yeah, and I, and I like feeling like like they, there's a little piece of them right there. They can, they can actually see like, oh my God, I mailed that to her one time. It's fun. Yeah, yeah it's fun. So you write episodes too, right? I have co-written four episodes with our show runner, Erica Messer. Um, uh, so yeah, I've written, I've written four of them, half written. And it is a true half writing. Like we, we come up with the idea together and then she writes half, I write half, and then we come together and we smush it together until it's one kind of voice, which usually involves us just sitting in our office and petting each other and eating sandwiches. We get in this thing where we eat sandwiches and drink juice and talk and braid each other's hair, but eventually a, a script comes out of it. So how do you kill time on the set between takes, let's say, or they can be long days on the set, right? Yes. I don't believe in killing time because uh, time expands and contracts and actually all happens at the same time. And uh, so since we're all in infinite suspension of the present moment, and I work with literally the nicest people in the world, uh, that and, and interesting, and not just nice, like nice is like, oh, that's a nice lamp, like kind, grounded, passionate, fierce human beings, all of which are unique and, and have diverse like passions. Like these aren't people that like, oh, I'm gonna sit at home and count my mountain of money. They're like philanthropic, generous, smart, uh, participating in, in, in humanity kind of people. So there's, you're always in a state of like, I mean, it's kind of gross to be like, and Pollyannish to be like, no, it's, it's constantly wonderful there, but it's constantly wonderful there. So we all just hang out. And traditionally, I think on shows, you think like someone says cut and everybody kind of goes to their trailer and whatever, and sure, if it's you know the middle of the night and everyone's exhausted, you might go take a nap or something. But for the most part, we all just hang out with each other and talk, and um, and we we make a concerted effort to spend time with each other when we're not around. And since uh, Joe and I have been here doing this press thing, in just New last York. night I got in New York. I got um, I pulled out my phone. We were doing something. I pulled out my phone, and it was like 25 texts. I know when my phone says that, that's all our text chain. That's the the eight of us, the cast members, because we'll just text each other like madly like we we love each other the four girls uh that are on the show aisha paget aj and i we have a thing called hot tub wine machine which we do like once once every like i would say six six weeks period uh and sometimes even sooner that we just we drink white wine we it sounds kind of gross but it's great we drink white wine i make a cheese plate we order sushi and then we get in a hot tub for hours and just talk and we're thick as thieves. So there's really no like, you know, it is long hours and stuff, but the actual doing of the job is, is very pleasant and be, being around the people is very pleasant. So it's all good. So friendships, it sound like, sounds like they're important to you. So what do you like in a friend? Like what, who makes it onto your very special friend list? Uh, I just think people that are transparent and authentic and uh, people that are passionate about things, people that are willing to expand uh, and grow, and um, yeah, stuff like that. Those are tougher I, to find. Well, I've had the same group of, I literally have had the same group of friends. I mean, I have other friends that like join the fold or whatever, but I've had the same group of friends since like college, and we're thick as thieves, and, and those friends just don't go away. I pro it's probably enviable, like my little group. But yeah. And where'd you go to college? Cal State Fullerton and Cypress Community College first. So no one has to be afraid of community college. That's, some of us just have to do that, but yeah. And it's a great start. Mm -hmm. So good memories in college, was it, did you love those years? Um, I, I did, I didn't, I almost flunked out of high school because I had sort of a, it was kind of tumultuous. And, um, and so it was less tumultuous when I was in college and that, I was like, oh, that's why I couldn't con Oh, okay. And I was getting much better grades. So, um, like, I had almost a 4.0 in, in college. 
Um, and uh, it was when I, I, I was very shy, which is why I had to take up acting. And then um, when I got into college, it was something I was good at. And, I, and to get like that kind of like, I'm good at this and I'm so fascinated by it. I could learn about it forever and ever and ever. Um, there's this book I really like called The Big Leap. And in it, he talks about your zone of genius. And it doesn't mean that like it's the thing that makes you, that you're a genius. It just means that a thing that you could do all day long and still feel alive when it was done. You might be exhausted, but you feel like, and that's what like make it, being creative makes me feel. So to be able to work at it and to feel like I was getting someplace and back, I mean, I thought I was going to live on cat food for the rest of my life. So I was happy to like just learn it, get out and get like eight day jobs and just go do plays at night. So this is like amazing. A dream. I just do it for a living. So what was tumultuous before college? Your uh, home life? Yeah. 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 I come from a, well, who does, I mean, everybody's got their own bag of rocks and my particular bag of rocks was a that bag of rocks. It was, and it was, and it was uh, clunky, and I was uh, real strange, and um, and I think that lots of people have at least one parent that has uh, that you know feels so afraid about either their choices in life or whatever that it's made them a little cruel, and they go a little unconscious, and and then you know that affects everybody else, and everybody's sort of having to scramble around trying to manage the emotions of this one adult, and. Um, and, and that happens to a lot of people. So it's not like I'm, there's nothing extraordinarily unique about it at all. It's, I'm literally saying something that 90% of anybody who's watching this would be like, yes, that. So it was just, it was tumultuous in a way that made it hard to sort of focus. But the great thing about that kind of thing is that when you have that kind of contrast, I just went to go see Pink in concert and I was like, talk about somebody to admire her and I want to be like that, that ability to like, you've had all this contrast in your life, like stuff that isn't great. And to be able to be like, but now look, and I don't know, there's like a saying, it's like basically you don't know that, you have to go to the depths to really experience. Like it gives you this sense of like, oh my gosh, like look at, I appreciate this so much. So it's not a sad thing, it's just that's how it was. and. And the difference between like, oh my gosh, I could afford, if I had to like move out of my house at 15 years old and go live at someone else's house, I could find $100 to rent a room. And at the time I couldn't, and that was really scary. And, and not only that, but my mom and my sister and I are like blissfully all happy and we've made our lives into exactly what we wanted. And, and I think that that kind of radical responsibility that you have to take to be like, okay, this is, this is my bag of rocks. How am I gonna make this work is good. And, and everything everything works out. But I feel like it does take a certain degree of like not holding on to it. And you're like, but, but this thing, but look at this rock. Look at this bad thing. It's just that everybody's got those. So how did you learn all of this? How did you get all of this in perspective the way that you do now? Because obviously you do have it in perspective. You have, you, you choose to. You choose to. So nobody taught you or you didn't like just kind of go through a process. You feel like it just was inherent in like your I thought, personality. I felt like I had a choice. I would, you know, like I felt like I had a, like, okay, well, kind of leaving it.